I lost you. So, um, having said that, um, he goes, okay, you know, now we need to get the people who have, who have done this violence, right? The white population or however you want to take it, right? Who's done this violence and then get them to step forward and at the same time as the black people are stepping forward and telling their story. And if you did it in the same town, right? Let's say you take Springfield, Oregon, right? And you had some daring um, officers who stood up and said, you know, I've been profiling... I've been, um, I've done some bad things, you know what I mean? In the huge town meeting, at the same time as the Afro-Americans who lived here stood up and said, you know, I've been treated this way my entire life, and, and, and broadcast it to the whole community. We have that ability. We can broadcast the whole thing to the whole community. Now, what you, oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> what you get is um, you, get, you get reality. Right there in your face. Um, I should have brought a spoon. I'll get one. So with this reality of your next door neighbor, the guy right down the street, who you don't even know, who has kids, who's been profiled, or the young teenager who's been profiled, and, you know, or, you know, just... When it becomes the reality of an entire community, and when the entire community starts to talk about the violence, and starts to talk about racial profiling, starts talking about, um, really, how do we beat the hate, okay? How, how do we, as, as white men, okay, because I'm going to say that because I grew up in white privilege, all right? So I thought white most of my life. It wasn't until that um, I really came to Oregon and, and grew up, you know, it wasn't until my 20s, early 20s, that I started realizing, you know, or, you know, as soon as I was a, a young male, really 17, 18, you know, a little older, <laughs> that I started realizing that this, this heinous thing was out there in the community, you know, my father always taught me to, you know, to deal with life in peace, you know, and, um, my father marched with King in Selma, Alabama, and you guys are like, "What man, Selma, Alabama?" Well, Selma, Alabama was the first time that the um, uh, the white um, the whites uh, marched with the blacks, um, being ready to incur the same violence upon them that the Afro Americans had been being fostered on on them. Right, which is a pretty heavy thing, you know. My father told me about like when he was getting preparing, prepared for the march, and they would take all the people off into these rooms and have talk with them about, okay, this is what to expect if you start getting beat around the head, cover your head. Um, if you're maced, cover your eyes. If the dogs go after you, uh, put your hands somewhere where they can't get them. Okay, my, and my father's a white man right now. He's a very well-respected white man. Um, my sister, you know, did all her work in Africa. My father knows congressmen. Um, he's very, um, a very influential per person in the Catholic Church. That's how I've been on the White House grounds. Um, geez, I don't know. <laughs> you want to talk about special invites? I've been special invited there twice. That's when I got ran around the... Um, uh, the uh, living quarters of the um, White House with Amy, Cor uh, Amy Carter because we um, we met at the Easter egg hunt. Um, but I've also been there probably, you know, a dozen times with all my family members as they came down out of Minnesota and going to the White House was part of, like, visiting, you know, um, the nation's capital. And uh, so anyways... So, 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 I'm back where I was. So, Selma, Alabama is the first time. See, if I wanted to do a layered thing, I would start on one end and build it like this. But we're talking and, uh, you know, this is going to be just devoured by my church members. So, um, I'm not getting too uh, fancy with it, you know. 
If I wanted a nice display one, maybe I'd do it a little different. So, so Selma, Alabama, man. So here we are. We're a long ways from Selma, Alabama. <laughs> We're a long time from Selma, Alabama. That was 1966. Now, now let me tell you what happened in Selma. First, at the bridge, there was violence. The, the traditional beating, uh, beatings that we've seen in you know in documentaries, the hoses, the dogs, all that stuff, right? Now, at on the march. This is when a lot of the white people got involved. Not as many were at the bridge, but um, my father wasn't at the bridge. He was at the march, all right? But after hearing that everybody at the bridge, and, and you know, the day before had been beaten, they, he was prepared to be beaten. You know what I mean? A white man. Yes, a white man marching for black people, you know, because it was a good Christian thing to do. So, as we hold to good Christianity... As we hold to the possibility of a, of a better community, even if we're not Christians, even if we're Wiccan, even if we're Muslim, even if we're, you know, um, um, Buddhist, even if we're agnostic or atheistic, we want a better community. And especially if we have children, we want a better community. Okay? We want it and before, for, the, for the grace of our children. Now, if you look at the natives, I talked about that. They look seven seven generations ahead to decide on what they're going to do today and if we could just look one generation ahead all right or two generations ahead it's been two generations since the civil rights act was activated two generations right we're working on the third one right now all right and then let's talk how long since the slaves were freed or you know so we're looking at like generation, we're looking at like the seventh generation already of what happened, all right? This one's done. And um, I'm gonna cook them at the same time. Oh, I got extra dough, I thought so. You got enough for three pies. <laughs> I don't have enough filling for three pies. So, so we're looking at this next generation and um you know or seven generations down the road and like man where are we going to be seven generations from now where are we going to be in one generation from now you know and um i mean after after three generations of this supposedly civil rights and equality shouldn't we have it by now shouldn't we as a community find a way in all forms for us to, you know, uh, come to a better place. Now, in the big cities, this is working better. I've seen in the big cities in the 80s and 90s, Afro-Americans were gaining, uh, you know, uh, social and um, political status. They were not hated by their neighbors because a long time ago there in the big cities, um, we had this, you know, we had the, the, the segregation beaten down. We had we had the children start being together in class. And that's really what changes things. When when you're you know when you're a kid, and you know and um, let's say you're you're um, an Afro American family, right? I'm gonna say Afro American. I'm not gonna say white. I'm gonna say Afro American family. And he brings home a white friend, right? And it, uh, look, reverse racism is reverse racism. I'm, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call you both out. All right. So, so this Afro American um, family looks at this white child like, why is this white child in our house, right? Because they're all about Afro American. They're all about black. But as time goes on, right? Let, let's see the little boy says to his mom, right? Because moms are great at like helping break through that like stupidity of men. That the need to be violent of men <laughs> and blessed be the mothers you know what I mean so so we have this little boy and he goes mom 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 can my friend stay for dinner right um and they become really close friends and and see what happens along the way is this black family realizes that this isn't a white kid this isn't a Hispanic kid this isn't a child that's not non-black it's just a kid, okay? That's it. He's just a kid. So something happens right there, okay? When they laugh at the two kids playing, they do something fun. Something happens, okay? 
the ability for us to move forward. Now, you know, the reconciliation in South Africa was riddled with hate, right? Well, the, the recon, <laughs> you know, we tried to riddle it with laughter years ago, man. Richard Pryor, John Belushi, Saturday Night Live, um, you know, um, Bill Cosby. We all tried to break it out with laughter, right? And that, that helped a little bit. I mean, it, you know, it, it helped the whole society as a whole. But when you get back to these small towns where there is predominantly one race and they don't know, they just don't know what black people are. And, and they don't know what yellow people are. And they don't know what, you know what I mean? They don't understand the different races. They don't want them here. I remember when I first got here, it wasn't just against blacks and Hispanics. It was against anybody from California. <laughs> you know, and, and people in Oregon hated people from California. Why? Well, a lot of them had progressive ideas. A lot of them were moving up here because they wanted to get away from the big city and wanted to get back to a place that was a little bit calmer. But still, the intrinsic hate was there, right? Well, I'm sure that's gone now, to the most part, because they got bigger problems. They got Afro-Americans owning business in town, and you know, and, but as soon as the children start playing together, or as soon as, you know, I find a lot of people who like see me play with their children, and I just play with kids because I love kids. Um, you know, um, I got kids of my own, um, and you, I told you a story about how I treat kids. I don't care, you know, if I'm using or not, if I'm black, white, yellow. I don't care what color they are. Kids are kids to me, and I just play with them, and um, they play with me because I understand them, you know, and if you ask me if I know all their names, no, I don't. <laughs> they all call me Uncle Thor, and that's just what it is, and that's cool by me. I don't need to know their names. Um... Unless they're on one of my teams, and then I try to get personable. But that's after, you know, I have parental um, uh, permission and all that. That, that. You know, that's a very serious thing. Because, you know, when I, I, I started just trying to be friends with kids in this town, and I, got, I had the local um, people out of fear call, call the police and, you know, and, and say he keeps talking to these kids. And then the police go up and ask these kids, well, is he asking you where you live and your names? And, of course, kids are going to say yes, you know. And I'm like, oh, my God. And they come to my house and, you know, accuse me of being a pedophile. Well, it, look, it's not racism. It was fear. That's all that was, right? Now, the cops were racist. That's not the question about that. They're assholes. <laughs> you know, the, you know, um, some of them here... Um, I've met maybe two or three of them in Springfield that had some kind of lick of sense and respect, respectability. <laughs> when it comes to such um, things that I'm speaking about, um, but the rest of them are, you know, they're, they're still 20 years behind. So I'm saying all this is like, look, man, I'm not trying to get stirred up in the, the hate. I'm trying to give you a template for us to go, okay, this is how we move forward. Now, this is how it's happened in other places. This is how it happened 60 years ago, you know, 50 years ago. This is what we want from our community and from our children. This knife don't work good for that. This one will herring knife works that's a that's a uh, hook beak knife is what we call them um they're used for turning potatoes they're also really good for coring things and stuff like that yeah here's some power out there so um so as a community in eugene and springfield you know they're doing trayvon marching marches and you know, and then people are getting, and marches are happening everywhere, and people are smashing, with, and you know, come on now, what does that show? That just shows ignorance and stupidity, and then the people who say they're going to kill somebody when they smash a window, that's just even more ignorance, stupidity, and violence. As soon as you say violence, as soon as you allude to, I will kill you if you, or hurt you, or I will harass you, 
um, I will call you names. I will, you know, as soon as you call somebody a name, you, they're not human anymore. They're, they're the asshole. They're a nigger. They're a honky. They're a piece of shit. They're a whore. They're, that you've, you've, and this is all straight from the uh, Oregon boot camp program. Okay, these are not my words. All right, these are words of the cognitive therapists um, who worked with us. So I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to come out as the first person who said it. I'm trying to come out as a person who's saying, look, look, look where we come. Look, 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 how, this is how we can get where we're going. And so, you know, I even have my own friends who got caught up in this Trayvon Martin thing. And I, I just post stuff and pass it along, you know. And they want to be argumentative with me about it, you know. And they don't know. I mean, unless you've ever been racially profiled, you don't know. Well, you know, but there's other types of profiling. There's somebody's a drunk profiling. There's somebody's, a, you know, an addict profiling. Don't matter what color you are there. You ain't getting nothing out of life, right? There's homeless profiling. There's um, poor profiling, okay? There's profiling... Uh, just because you don't like the way somebody dresses, the way their you know, community is. I mean, how many different kinds of profiling can you come up with? Come on, think about it. So let's not talk about just the one, all right? It's not just the one. It just happens to be this community is still pretty tight-knit, this Afro-American community, and they're going to they're gonna call people out if these people are wrong, right? So, again, where do we go from here? we find a way to reconciliate our communities so who's going to be the first white man or the first man who's who like when paul was walking on the road from damascus man a, a, a major christian killer <laughs> okay I, I, you know and, and jesus came to him and he said why do you kill my people why do you kill your people why do you kill your neighbors and you know and it really became, oh, hey, check this out, man. I bust through my butter there. It's because it's getting soft. It's like, check this out, man. Um, Jesus is saying, check this out, man. You know, you're killing, you're killing the people that I love. And I love you. And you, if you understand this, if you understand this gift I'm giving you, um, which was his love, all right, let's not get all... The, uh, uh, theological with it. Let's just get basic with it. His love. All right. So Paul realized he, he had to stop killing the Christians. And, it, and actually, Paul, I mean, we talk about Peter being the rock, but Paul was the one who did the, the like the, the, the serious footwork of creating um, many of the Christian values that we have today and the, and, and, and creating the new gospel. Um, because some point, somewhere, somebody had to get in there and say, whoa, 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 this is crazy, man. We got to back off this stuff, you know? And, um, so, you know, God came and spoke to Paul and he changed his ways. So I want to know who's going to be daring enough to change their ways, to stand up and say, I did this and I was wrong. I'd be amazed if uh, John Dalbora and E. Green, the people who, the two officers who almost racially beat me to death on the East Coast, would do that. But I would be proud. I would be proud of them. I would be proud of me. I would be proud of my community. And I would see some, some even more hope, right? And, um, you know... I had to forgive them because I realized God saved my life that night, and they had no part in it. They were just mechanisms of, um, you know, violence that were after me. Look at all that extra dough I got. Let me put that in the... I got enough for a whole, whole another pie. <laughs> I get kind of big when it's... My eyes get big when I make pie dough. I don't know why. It doesn't seem like it's ever going to go far enough. <laughs> all right. Get a bag here, put my pie in, my pie dough in. We got our oven preheated. 
so who's going to go first, man? It's not, it's not the people who are so involved in the hate and wanting to hurt other people and disruption. Um, there's going to be somebody who gets touched by something, who realizes, you know, maybe through their children's eyes, or through their own eyes, or through th through their Christianity or Muslim faith, or through their you know Hebrew faith, or through their Buddhist faith. Maybe some of those teachers will come forward and be like, "Hey, man, you know the Dalai Lama was just here preaching exactly that." And I don't think he wanted to just say, "Hey, have your few friends that you know are cool um, with different churches." I think he was trying to say every church. Every church, and I tried to say that to Pastor Dan Bryant the other day, in, in a very, not such a way, but in, in a short way, say, hey man, look at your cover page. It's a beautiful cover page, because it, it holds him and three um, esteemed men of this town, or four esteemed men of this town, and I, I know one's Hebrew, and I know one's Muslim, and I'm, I'm gathering the third one would have been um, Buddhist, and he's Christian. And they're all like, you know, arms around each other. Why is it only four? The Dalai Lama was like, man, it should be all of us, right? And that's where it comes into, is it's all of us. All right, this is not a race problem. This is not a profiling problem. This is not a hate problem. It's, um, it's a, a psychological uh, um, moral manifestation uh, uh, insurgency problem. That's really what it is. It's something that's in our brains, no matter what color you are. If you're black, you're like, Arr. if you're white, you're like, Arr, because the black people are like, Arr. and you know, and everybody's like, racist this, you're a racist, you're a racist. If you call it on racism, you're a racist. If you're not calling it on racism, you're a racist. How, how, how come it can't just be somebody who wants peace? Can, can we start off every statement about the Trayvon Martin, about racial profiling with, I want peace in my community, I'm going to tell you my story, and then I'm going to end it with, I want peace in my community. I don't care what color you are, I don't care, you know, I want the hate to end. Because the more we push it, the more the children hear it, the more the children are going to do it, the more it's going to continue. And we're in a bad place now, all right? The whole nation, you know? People don't want to support our president. I don't care what color he is. You should always try to support your president, you know? And I, I look, and I say that even after I don't like the Bush family at all, all right? They're presidents for a long time. I don't like the Bush family. But as a social person, I was still out in the community supporting my community. So if I support my community, that I support my neighborhood, then I support my country. Even and it doesn't matter what president's in there, okay? So being that said, can we not say you're racist and you're racist? Can we say, do you want peace? Do you want peace? I want peace. I want peace. Can we do that? And then tell our stories. Maybe that's how we begin this reconciliation in this country. Maybe it's some of us writing on Facebook. Look. You know, and Facebook now is trying to move so fast that you can't put in uh, like a decent sized writing because of all the stuff that's being pumped at you. Uh, and maybe it's I got an old computer, but like I have to go to Word, <laughs> write it in Word, and then come back to Facebook and paste it in when I want to say a full thought. Like we're having a discussion and this is a full thought at this time. I'm going to get off my knees and let's prep the oven. <laughs> um, so this nation... You know, if, if I'm coming out with this, woo, so well, yeah. I'm coming out with this full of thought, and look at that. All right, set up, ready to go. All right, now here we go. And we're gonna do that for about 50 minutes at 380. Okay, and um. I'll start at 44 minutes.
So, so, so do you hear what I'm saying? Okay. And, and you know, so as we address this issue, and I'm saying this to everybody.